I'll start in a minute, maybe less. Timing is everything. Okay, I'm just going to restart it so that my timer restarts. Okay, hi everybody. Um, I'm Johan, and I'm going to talk a little bit about if you're new to this world. Um, and I think many of us have been in the Microsoft environment, so I hope this is useful. Um, I'll talk a bit about, I'll, I'll introduce myself and, and my company, and then we'll look at resources that can help you migrate from other databases. Um, what can you find on the Brasquez website? Uh, books, video training, YouTube channels, web tutorials, and a few other stuff. Okay, so I'm not, I'm not from IT really. I'm a tinkerer and I've uh, been uh, working with computers for a while, but I'm actually a metallurgical engineer. I started the company a while ago, but I've been coding since, uh, well, a long time ago. Who knows what that is? Two people. Three people. Okay. Four. Uh, so I'm not alone, at least. Okay. Those are Spectrum computers, ZX81, ZX Spectrum. That's where I grew up um, when I was still in primary school. These are the tools that I, uh, I'm working with most at the moment. Uh, Linux, uh, Python and Cython and, uh, and Postgres. Uh, the company, we do stuff like pyrometallurgy, high temperature metallurgy. Uh, so we like it when it's about 1700 degrees Celsius. Anything below that becomes a bit chilly. Uh, we, do also, we also do hydrometallurgy, which is water-based metallurgy where you leach stuff. And uh, This is all about getting uh, metals out of, out of ores. So uh, things like platinum and chrome and manganese we get out of the... Um, the ores. Uh, South Africa is blessed with a lot of resources, so we got quite a bit of work. Uh, we do lots of process modeling and simulation. We read some of that software we, we write ourselves, but we also uh, use a lot of open source tools like OpenFoam and Phoenix and Paraview. Um, and we're also part of a, an open source community. Uh, we get together every year in, in the latter part of the year in Pretoria. It's called OpenSim. So if you're into that type of thing, uh, perhaps you can join us. We deliver part of our services um, through web applications, and we use Django, REST Framework, and, and Angular at the moment as the basis for that. And yeah, we love Python because we're engineers. Um, there's a lot of scientific and, and technical resources available in the Python environment, so we can get a lot done quite nicely. Okay, so if you're really new to it, you join a new company and your boss tells you, you now you're going to build your database in Postgres, and you're from the Microsoft world, it might be a little bit daunting. Uh, you might not have heard of it. And uh, that's, it's for that type of scenario that I'm giving this talk. Um, to get a new team member up and running quickly is, is, is really important uh, and to, get, uh, to become productive as quickly as possible. Okay, um, if you know of other resources uh, that I don't mention in the talk, please let me know. I'll update the presentation as I, as I learn more. Um, I even when I re reviewed it last night, I've, I found a, f a few new things. Okay, so if you want to migrate from, from other databases like uh, Microsoft SQL or, or Oracle, um, the Postgres wiki has a, a page dedicated just to that. And um, there are some content on the internet as well. Uh, this is uh, a, a particularly good post uh, comparing uh, Postgres to Microsoft. Um, this is the, the Postgres wiki page that talks about migrating. So there's lots of instructions for, well, a whole bunch of databases. MySQL is the Microsoft um, Oracle, etc. So if you need to port your data um, to Postgres, um, that's a, perhaps a good place to start. 
Uh, that's the other post that I was talking about, just comparing it. Um, Microsoft is one of our sponsors, so I believe there is, they've got a place. They've got, they, they play in some space. Um, but uh, in our world, Postgres is definitely the better option. Okay, so what's available on the Postgres website? Uh, there's an about page, the manuals you can get there, um, the wiki. There's a lot more on the wiki than just the migrating uh, page. Uh, we'll look at some books. Well, uh, there's a, a list of books on the website as well. Um, and then it has uh, a list of other resources that you can find right on the website. So this is already probably the best place to start. Just go to the, the Postgres website. There's really a lot of content there. Um, this is what it looks like at the moment. Since I first did the, this presentation at the user group, um, it's changed. It looks a lot mo more modern now. Um, there's the, a few of the quick links that you can see on that first page. And the About page just tells you a little bit about Postgres and what it is. Uh, the documentation, you can download um, the online manuals. You can either access it online in, in HTML format, or you can download the PDFs as well. Um, yeah, so that's the PDF download page. Uh, the Postgres wiki, that should give you a, a bit of an idea what you can find there. Uh, general articles, some of the tutorials that I'll list uh, later, uh, you can find there. Um, snippets, really a nice uh, collection of, of things to help you. Uh, they've got a book list on the website, as I mentioned, and they've got a, a list of online resources, which uh, many of the things that I'm talking about today, you can find on that list as well. Uh, just returning to the manual quickly, um, for 10.5, it's just a little over 3,300 pages, so if you're bored on a Sunday afternoon, yeah, that's something to check off your list. Um, it contains a, a nice tutorial as the first part of the, of the book. Uh, then it uh, goes into the SQL language, server administration, client interfaces, server programming, and uh, then you've got a, a reference section as well. So it, it's vast and it's comprehensive. Um, so it's probably a good resource to, to befriend if, you, if you're serious about getting into Postgres. It's really, yeah, most of it is it's there. Uh, last night I, I did a few searches again and I found uh, on the Digital Ocean website, I quite like uh, how they present things. Um, some of the how-tos have, have really helped me in the past. And they've got uh, how to install and use Postgres on Ubuntu 18.04. We're, we use Ubuntu most of the time. Um, on that same page, you'll find a link to com a comparison between uh, uh, SQLite, um, MySQL, and Postgres, which is also uh, a nice uh, read-through. Learn how to create and manage tables, get better at managing roles and permissions, craft queries, uh, learn how to secure Postgres SQL, learn how to back up, this is fairly lightweight stuff, so if, you, if, you, if it's still early in the morning and you haven't had breakfast yet, then this is probably what you should uh, go to rather than the manual. Uh, because it can get you started and, and into the swing of things fairly quickly, and, and I believe in small victories. As if you can get stuff done and working quickly, then it builds your confidence and you're keen to do more. Uh, that's the, the how-to page on the Digital Ocean website, and if you scroll down, you'll see under the conclusion the other links that I've just listed. Uh, really nice page. Okay, so books. Uh, most of what I learned about computers, Pascal, C, C++, all of those things in the early days, uh, was uh, as a result of books that I purchased from CNA those days. Um, so I wrote hundreds of Hello World apps and, and those things, and, and they really got me started. And, and a good structured book is, I, I, I like uh, these two to get me started on a, on a new tool. 
most of the ones that I found you can access through Amazon and probably um, locally as well. Um, the major player in, in books related to um, Postgres is Pack Publishing. There's a, a whole number of books that you can get from, from them. Uh, really good stuff. Um, if, if you uh, want to get something in addition to the, to the uh, Postgres manual. I also found this. Uh, maybe if you're Portuguese, then you can try that one. Uh, but there's other publishers as well, Postgres Up and Running, uh, Mastering Postgres in Application Development, and you can also, if you want all the, the Postgres uh, documentation volumes on your bookshelf, um, then you can actually buy the printed copies of the Postgres manual as well, which are these volumes, System Server Administration, Client Interfaces, all of them. Uh, so if you're a book person, then you can do that as well. Okay, video training. What's available? Udemy. There's uh, quite a lot of stuff, uh, Postgres stuff on Udemy. Uh, but Udemy content is not curated, so people don't check up on it and make sure that it's of the right quality. Uh, we have never been disappointed on Udemy. You do your homework a little bit and see feedback from other people who have used the courses, and, and generally it's, it's quite good. Uh, Plural site, um, Malcolm actually told me about it um, at the user group. Uh, they have curated content, so that they have a bit of quality control. Um, but I can't vouch for it, for, the, for it because we haven't used it. But I'll show you some of the screenshots. Um, so these are examples of uh, the Udemy courses that you can do. Beginner's Guide, there's more than one of them, from hero to zero, several um, uh, courses. Uh, this is the, the um, plural site stuff. There's actually a whole series of, uh, of courses by a single um, a lecturer on, on, on this platform, which looks quite nice. Introduction, it, it covers from the basics, programming, uh, and it, then it goes over to advanced SQL queries, advanced server programming, um, a playbook for developer DBAs, this is by another guy, and some interesting things like time and temporal data. Um, you can have a look at the course overview, it looks, if you work in multiple time zones and all of those types of things, and you have to deal with all the, the time data, uh, that may be of use. YouTube channels, um, there's a top 100 list that I'll show you quickly. Uh, Postgres Professional, um, there is this Postgres, yeah, it's very active this channel, but unfortunately it's in Russian. Um, um, but the Postgres conference, um, so the videos you, you know about um, are, are being made as we speak and they are shared on, on YouTube as well. Um, even the ones that, uh, in the past, you can go and have a look at them from around the world. Uh, Programming Guru is one of the, the big ones that uh, pop up on the top 100. Uh, Enterprise DB, uh, Malcolm mentioned them as well. They're kind of the red hat of the Postgres world. Uh, and, uh, uh, commercial version of um, Postgres, and then Postgres Open. So you can Google the, the, the top 100 list, and they change. When I looked at it previously, these guys were on top, now programming gurus on top. Uh, but it gives you a good indication of where you can go to watch a few videos. The Postgres conference, as I said, um, program guru, uh, these are the uh, Postgres Open, which is another conference, and then Enterprise DB, their stuff, they've got a, a number of videos and playlists as well. Web tutorials, there's a number of them, the, and the URLs are given here, Postgres SQL tutorial, um, tutorials point, Postgres guide, Postgres SQL exercises, um, all really nice things, so you can, can have a look through all of them, and, and find which one works best for you. Uh, the practical stuff is quite nice to, to get your hands dirty and actually get a few things done. So these are the screenshots, tutorials point, um, the Postgres guide, simple SQL series, um, 
from PostgreSQL exercises. Other helpful things, um, who of you are using Docker? A few of them. Okay, if you're using Docker, you can get Postgres up and running in about 30 seconds, uh, which is really cool. So you just uh, say Docker run Postgres, and you see how the layers are downloaded from, uh, from Docker Hub, and then you've got a running Postgres system on, uh, on your computer. It doesn't mess around with your installation of your OS, and you can start playing around really quickly. Um, doing a full install on your OS, uh, yeah, that's a bit more painful, day one. Um, so you can get going in the flash. Django, um, the Django project, you can have a look at there um, to do a simple web app quickly and, and get your, your database up and running uh, with a web front end to that, um, if you're into Python. And that's my story. Any questions? Hello? Um, thank you for that talk. Um, the tricky thing I always find with migrating from one database system to another one is, is converting the right types to types in other languages. Can you say anything about about that, if you, for instance, migrating from uh, Microsoft SQL to uh, Postgres, and there's not a one-to-one -one mapping of the types, what do you do? In deal, how do you deal with that? Um, I haven't done that, so I can't really comment firsthand on it. Um, anybody else in the in the audience have ideas on on doing type mapping? Uh, but I'm sure if you if you talk to a few of the more experienced guys like Malcolm and and, and those, they would be able to help you because they would have felt a little bit of pain already. I haven't. I, we just, we dumped everything that we had in Microsoft SQL and, and started fresh in, in Postgres. Uh, but I think if you look at that first page that I showed for migration, that's probably the first place where you sh should get some answers. Uh, Jan, I might be able to answer some of that. Mostly you try and map them one-to-one uh, -one in the data types. Um, I, for example, had a migration from an Informix database to Postgres way back if, um, when it was when I started with this. Um, if there is, for example, cases where you can't map them directly, you m normally end up, maybe it's easier these days, but we had to actually write the program to convert the data from the one data type to the other one into Postgres. Um, there is applications around, for example, to um, ORA to PG, uh, PG, or PGA or, um, is one application for Oracle migrations, um, which do a lot of that work for you already. So there might be more tools today that actually can help with that. But otherwise, you probably end up writing some code to do that migration. Okay, thanks, Nico. Anything else? Yes. Um, again, maybe Niku can try and answer that as well. Um, oh, um, Postgres certifications. Yeah. Um, Would I recommend Postgres certifications? The little bit that I know about it in South Africa, Postgres training is perhaps a little bit scarce still. Um, if you want to get equipped, um, going to the, the, the Postgres uh, conference in, I think it's New York every year, um, that's what I hear from Quibus and Malcolm and those guys. That's probably your qu quickest way uh, to really get into it. They've got good, uh, good quality work, sh work sessions and training at that conference. Just a comment. Um, uh, I managed to get some good training from Jumping Bean um, in South Africa, so that's, that's worked well for us. Um, and then the other thing is other tools like PG Modeler and so on. Do you want to talk a little bit about those that you've maybe used? I haven't. You haven't. <laughs> so, um, because we work in Django, Django does most of the 
of the work for you uh, through the ORM. So I've actually done very little um, work directly in the database. Okay, I think that's 20 minutes gone, so I'll have to hand over to, um, to Nico for the next.